That's a no-brainer. What? <laughs> a no-brainer? <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to my Pastor Paul update. Happy Friday to everyone. I've got Jason Christensen, our director of worship with me. He's preaching this Sunday. It's gonna be a great message. We're gonna talk about that here in just a bit. First off, I want to just share with you some things that you need to know about here at St. Mark's. The first thing is this, VBS registration is wide open. And so put this in your calendar, sign your kids up, go invite the neighborhood kids, go talk to kids you don't even know and say, hey, would you like to go to VBS at St. Mark? I'm just kidding about that last one. Yeah, probably not a good idea, but feel free to start registering your kids for VBS. It's gonna be a great VBS this year. We didn't get to have one last year. We didn't. And uh, because of COVID, and so we're excited for this year. The other thing I wanna share with you is our next Welcome to St. Mark's class, which is basically our introduction to St. Mark's. If you're interested in being a partner at St. Mark's or you just want to know more about our ministries, our next one comes up on June 6th. We've got food there, you get to meet staff, we show you around the place, we talk about you know, what we believe, and then we also talk about your strengths, uh, which is all part of the, the whole uh, Welcome to St. Mark's class, yeah. and it's a lot of fun. So we just invite you to that, and you can sign up for that, or you can talk to Sarah or myself or Pam here on staff, we'll get you connected. So those are two things that are coming up that I wanted you to know about. And so now on to you, Mr. Jason. Yes, sir. All right. You're given the message this Sunday. We yes. continue to go through Corinthians, one love. I tackled the most difficult uh, subject of all last <laughs> week as I just kind of glanced off of sex. You know, I, didn't, I didn't even go into, you know, some of the serious. Yeah. I mean, it's got some messed up stuff yeah. in, in Corinthians. And yeah. so part of this moves into the freedom of a Christian, yep. which is the issue that the Corinthians kind of were abusing on a lot of different ways, yeah. which they were abusing it when it came to their sexuality. So yeah. uh, share a little bit about what you're, what you're focusing on this Sunday. Yeah, so we're, we're focusing on uh, 1 Corinthians 8 and talking about uh, meat sacrificed to idols in Corinth, yeah. all the different temples and, and the sacrificial system there. And then they would sell that meat at the temple or at, at, uh, in town at the yeah. markets. Yeah. And what do you do as a Christian? Yeah. What do you do with this meat that's sacrificed to an idol? Even right. though you know... Those idols aren't real. Right. It's just beef. Can I eat it? Right, yeah. Have you ever thought about what it must have tasted like? I mean, I think about meat sacrificed to idols, and I'm thinking a good, long, slow smoking yeah. meat, yep. and they probably rubbed it with some good... I mean, I don't know. It'd been hard for me not to eat that uh, meat. Yeah. Actually, it's really interesting because... Uh, and we, obviously, we don't have this issue today. Uh, we don't go to the marketplace and say, oh, my gosh, this was sacrificed to Zeus yeah, yeah. Uh, or Apollo. Um, but uh, back then, that was their primary source yeah. of meat. And so, you know, you, you sacrificed a bull or, or whatever animal, and, you know, the, the temple priests and priestesses, they didn't eat all of it, so they had to do something with it, yeah. and they bring it to the marketplace. Yeah. And so this is where a lot of times they got their their meat. And the second thing would be this, as far as just a cultural context, a lot of them didn't have, they don't have homes where they have stoves, right? Right. right. So they, they couldn't just, oh, I'm going to go take that that ribeye, you know, <laughs> and bring it home and throw it on the grill. They didn't have that. It, you, you got your meat in the marketplace, and it was ready to go yeah. uh, for you. And so this was a problem for the Corinthians. So what was the issue that was going on then um, with, within the Corinthian church? What were, what were they doing with this meat sacrificed idols? Yeah, so they would they would eat it themselves. They would go to other people's houses and, and they would serve it and they'd yeah. find out, oh, this is sacrificed idol meat. What what am I supposed yeah. to do? And and they knew as Christians that those idols weren't real and and they should they're free to eat it in their mind because it's it's just meat. Why right. shouldn't we eat it? Right. And, but Paul comes back and says, uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. Yeah. So, so let me just pop quiz here yeah. for you. Okay. Uh -oh. So I'm a Christian in, in Corinth, and we're going to get to how this relates to to everybody today yeah. for yep. sure. And you're going to focus on that yep. in your message. But yep. I'm, I'm a Corinthian Christian. I go to the meat market. Can yeah. I buy some meat sacrificed to an idol? Can to, you? To, to bring or it home, should you? To bring it home and have it with my family. And I don't have a problem with that as a Christian, a Corinthian Christian. Can I do that? Yes. Okay. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, so, because it doesn't yeah. bother my conscience, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, let's say um, 
I've, I'm, I'm invited over to somebody else's house. Yeah. Let's say they're a pagan. Yeah. They're not a Christian. They don't yeah. believe the same thing I believe. Yeah. And they've invited me over, and they have meat that's been sacrificed to an idol, and it's just us. Yep. Is it still okay for me to eat that meat? No. Okay? No. Why not? Because you have to, as a Christian, use your freedoms to serve others. Yeah. You have to be thinking about, I'm going to eat this meat. He thinks, as a Christian now, I'm worshiping this idol sure. that they've been sacrificed sure. to. Right, right. So as a Christian, we, our freedom also has to submit itself yeah. to the needs of other Christians and even non-believers. Yep. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm wow, saying. Wow, that's pretty heavy. Yeah. That's pretty heavy. Yeah. Because I hear so much today in, in Christian theology and yes. messaging, yeah. like my freedom yeah. is the ultimate reality of my yeah. faith. Yeah, that's just as Americans, we have our yeah. rights. It's right. my right. You can't take away my rights or tell me what to do with my rights or my freedoms. Yeah. And, and, and Jesus says, you have these rights, but you're supposed to use them to yeah. serve others. Yeah, to build others up. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yep. yeah. See, I think that's really important. I'm glad you're preaching on it's that. It's nuanced. See, I feel like you had the temple prostitutes. That's a no-brainer. What? <laughs> a no-brainer? That was hard. Of course you're not going to go there. <laughs> right, yeah. What do you do? I feel like I have the harder one. You do have the harder one. That's it's why I gave it to you. I gave you the harder one. Um, yeah. So I, I give you an example, yeah. and I'm wearing this hat for a reason, and it's just a. I'm just wearing the hat. When I was at college mm -hmm. at Concordia uh, University in St. Paul, Minnesota, I, I was. Uh, Ellie will tell you this. I'll tell you this. I was pretty prideful. I mean, I, I really thought I knew. I was going into ministry, and I felt called by God, and I, I just I knew what was cool yeah. and what was right and what he had to do and. So we'd have worship services, college campus ministry worship services, and I'd always wear my hat. Mm. And um, I remember that really ticked people off because they, they, you know, I don't know what you grew up in as far as a church setting, but, you know, you removed your hat, yeah. you know, yeah. as you, you came in and worshiped. And I remember um, doing that out of pride, right? Yeah. I was doing that out of spitefulness. I was doing that out of... I'm declaring my freedom, because yeah. that's what college kids do anyways, yeah. Oh, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, <laughs> God help us when our kids get to college, I don't right? Know. And I was doing it that way. Yeah. And, I, and I realize now that that was very selfish, that it was disrespectful of others. Now, it's not a perfect analogy, because right. Paul's analogy is about people's faith, yeah. right? I mean, yep. if it's a hindrance to their faith, if they look at you and, and they see you eating this meat, they just assume that Jesus really doesn't make that much of a Correct. difference to yep. you, yep. right? Jesus is just one among other gods, yep. right? But, and so my hat, I, I, nobody was doubting their faith because of my hat. <laughs> <laughs> they were just thinking I was a jerk, <laughs> which I was, which I was. And, um, and I think that we can be that way as well as Christians w w with oh, our yeah. freedom, yep. right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and so really, are you gonna incorporate that into the message, don't be a jerk with your freedom? That would be a great fill in the blank, right? I didn't have that. Don't one, be man. a underlined noun like you know, yeah. Mad, Mad Libs. Libs. Yeah, yeah. Jerk, jerk. Yeah, yeah. With your freedom. Yeah, that's basically the whole sermon. That's the whole sermon. You don't need to come this week. <laughs> We've summarized it yeah. for you. Don't be a jerk. Uh, and and instead, love, yeah. love. Yeah. yeah. Did I do that right? Is no, that, no. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. Excellent. I'm excited for the message. Yeah. And. Um, it's going to be a great, a great Sunday. Excellent. So definitely. I hope you all can make it. Uh, thanks for watching today. God's blessings as you connect faith and life. We'll see you later. Don't be